go ahead and get started. Okay, yeah. great. Um, well, thank you everyone for being with us this evening. Um, my name is Deb Ryan. I am an independent educational consultant in North Carolina, and we are very excited to bring you tonight information on building the narrative piece of your college application. Um, Sumana, do you want to introduce yourself? Absolutely. Hello, everyone. My name is Sumana Malko, and I'm the Associate Director of College Counseling at the Westminster Schools in Atlanta, Georgia. And I apologize, I have a very zealous, playful dog in the background, so I'm going to hope that she, she stays quiet. Uh, we'll have thunder at my, behind me and dog behind you. It's good. Um, oop, it is not allowing me. There we go. So actually, let me go. I think we're, ah, yes, there we go. So yeah. um, Samara, do you want to talk about holistic review? I will. Um, so I'm going to kick this off by talking about holistic review and what it means for students and how it relates to the application process. So when a student submits their um, the complete application package, it consists of a lot of different pieces. So you have the application itself, you have letters of recommendation, you have test scores, you have the activity section, the essay, um, transcripts, and all of this together creates a picture of the student who is applying for admission. So what holistic review means is that there isn't any one thing that could get you out of the running. So what that means is when an, a college will evaluate a student for admission, they are going to look at all of the different pieces and consider everything that the student has submitted before they make a decision on whether that student should be admitted or not. And how this relates to everything that we're going to talk about is that we are talking about basically the narrative or the, the pitch that we are making of ourselves as students when we apply to colleges. Um, why the different pieces are important. Why, for example, are it, is the activity section important? So if you look at this from um, a college's perspective, right? If you look at a vibrant campus and you look at all of the students who are engaged, um, they are doing things. Um, there's a lively feel on campus because there are clubs and organizations and there's lots happening. That is directly a function of students who run these organizations and who have the ambition, the will, the desire to do certain things outside of the classroom. And so when they look at students' applications, if they're seeing the same thing on the student's application where the student is engaged outside of the classroom and is doing a lot, then that means that that student is a good fit for them. So which is why the entire picture is very important as opposed to just the transcript um, and just rigor on the transcript and grades. Turn it over to you, Deb. So what we want to talk about tonight is really the narrative piece. So a lot of times this is the part of your application that I think sometimes students can feel like they have the most control over. Sometimes you can't control at this point, if you're a junior, what you got in ninth grade math. You can't control necessarily the fact that there was a giant pandemic that the entire globe went through. Um, and, and so which massively disrupted your education and your ability to do various, you know, things that you had traditionally done before. And so this piece, I feel like the narrative piece is really the chance that you have to, to sort of tell your story, to sort of share the pieces of you beyond just the numbers. So as, again, if we talk about that holistic review um, aspect, colleges will see a lot of numbers about you. Um, if you're applying with test scores, they're going to see test scores. They're going to see uh, class rank if you have if your school ranks students. They're going to see your weighted GPA. They're going to see um, lots and lots of numbers. And so the hard part there is um, sometimes you, the human being, can be missing when we have those just those numbers. So the narrative piece, the story piece, is really the you piece, I think, in, in really wonderful ways. So there's three parts of that narrative, I think, that really work together in your application. So the first is actually that activities list, as Sumana was talking about. So this is where colleges get to see who you are beyond the classroom. How do you spend your life? What's important to you? How do you spend your time? Um, how, how have you prioritized sort of the things that you wanna do when you're not in class? The main essay, which is absolutely hands down my favorite part of the application, is your chance to truly tell your story. It is your chance for, for colleges 
to see you as a human being. Um, and the more that you can come to life in that essay, the more that you can sort of become a, a true person that they can imagine coming onto their campus, the better that that narrative is going to be. And then the final piece of the narrative, I think, um, that sometimes students see as a sort of an afterthought, but it's actually a really critical piece of the application is the supplemental essays. The supplemental essays are the essays that colleges specifically ask you. So the main essay, there's typically going to be one big essay that you write. A lot of times you're gonna be maybe be working on these in your English classes. The supplemental essays are the smaller questions that colleges ask. And each college tends to have their own. Um, sometimes they're similar, sometimes they're not at all. Um, but these again are a chance for you to reveal pieces of who you are as a person in the application, again, beyond just those numbers. Um, and so that's why we wanna think about sort of those, they work in, in conjunction with each other. So let's talk about the activities section and what that does for the student and what really it should be showcasing. So the activities list, um, and we will talk about this specifically with respect to the Common App, is a section on the Common Application where a student is given 10 slots and they're asked to list every activity that they've engaged in outside of the classroom, anything extracurricular. It provides a context for, um, the student's life outside of the classroom. It also speaks to what the student is passionate about, what they choose to do, how they use their spare time. And it also gives us a sense for what the student's strengths are and what their likes and dislikes and you know, how they basically make their way through life. So there are 10 um, slots on the activities section. And this is the student's chance to, to showcase everything they've done and pitch themselves and their interests and their st strengths and their skill sets. So um, some of the things that colleges look for when they look at your activities section is number one, they're looking to see what types of activities have you engaged in. Um, you know, if maybe five out of the 10 activities all tend to be sports related activities, then that says something about the student. They are an, a student athlete. They're clearly, um, they enjoy being active and they thrive on a sense of community, teamwork, things like that. They're drawing certain conclusions from what they see. Also, when colleges are evaluating the activities section, they're also looking to see what kind of impact you've had on your community as a student. That community can be the school community. It can be your community outside of school. Maybe you're very active with your church. Um, maybe you participate in your temples activities. Maybe you do a lot of community service. But everything that you list in the activities section tells a story about you and it kind of feeds into that narrative of who you are as a student. Um, one thing I will mention with respect to the Common App specifically, within the 10 slots that you're given to list your activities, um, when Common App is reading one through 10, they are assuming that if you list an activity as number one on the list, that that was the most meaningful activity to you. Now, generally speaking, if you've spent the most time on one activity, then it could possibly be the most meaningful to you, but it doesn't necessarily have to play out that way. It could be that you might spend maybe just a few weeks in the year on something specific, but it is extremely meaningful to you because it feeds your soul. And maybe it speaks to a part of you that um, nothing else that you're doing speaks to you in that way. So those are things to consider. And also how you describe your activities is extremely important because you only get about 200 characters. So, you know, you really do have to pack in the information and generally what you want to talk about as you're describing these activities is what kind of position did you hold? What did you do? And um, what kind of impact did you have, if any? And also what did this engagement do for you overall? So the activities list is absolutely important. And I think one of the biggest mistakes students make is they sometimes tend to forget all of the things that they've done and they don't do themselves justice by eliminating activities because sometimes it's not something structured that happened at school. It could be something relatively unstructured that happens outside of school, but it's still meaningful. So it's extremely important that students consider everything they've done since the beginning of ninth year, ninth grade year, and make sure to include those in the activities section. 
Absolutely. The other thing I would add to is I think sometimes students feel a pressure to join 48 clubs and to have, you know, I've got this 36 things on my resume. In the Common App in particular, you can only list 10, which I think is a real signal to students that instead of uh, sort of spreading yourself really thin um, to really engage with things that are meaningful for you. They, they're they not gonna look at beyond the 10. And so um, sometimes I have students ask me the question, you know, what's the magic number? I always get the magic number question. What's the magic number? How many things should I be engaged with? And I'm like, listen, if you play a sport and you play the club of that club team of that sport and you, you know, you're babysitting your little sister all the time, maybe you only have three or four activities and that's okay, but they're meaningful to you and you spend a lot of time on them. So I think it, it reduces that pressure sometimes that it's not, you can't list 86 different clubs. You can only list 10, which I deeply appreciate from the Common App. Um, so let's talk about the main essay for a second. For a second. Um, the main essay, which I'm sure a lot of you have heard about is um, in the Common App, it is 650 words is the maximum for the main essay. And we'll look at the prompts in a little bit. There are seven prompts to which you can respond. You'll respond to one. The key ingredient is that the main essay is about you. It is a way for you to show colleges what values you have, um, what matters to you in your life, what have been important experiences in your life. Sometimes students have a tendency to, to not want to write using the word I. Uh, they want to talk about their grandfather or they want to talk about another person. And, and I always say that's, I'm sure that that human being is delightful and wonderful. However, you are the one going to college. So I, that using the pronoun I is really important. Um, I think that this generation of students is really, really good at taking selfies and taking pictures of themselves, but they are very hesitant to actually write about themselves. So really taking the time to, to sort of figure out what your voice is and what your story is, is really, really important. Who are you? How, how do you come across the page? I think one of the things that is a, a great sort of test of a great main essay is if, if you left it somewhere, laying on a desk somewhere, and someone picked it up and looked at it, would they know, even if it didn't have your name on it, that this is yours, that this is your story? Because that means that that is really special to you and that you have actually really articulated something that's important about who you are and about your experience. Um, uh, essays are typically, in terms of how colleges view your application, one of the highest non-academic pieces of your application. Um, and they really use it as well to assess how well you can write. So one of the important things to know about college is regardless of your major, you are going to have to write in college. Um, and I think this come, sometimes comes as a surprise to students, but you'll be writing a lot of essays. Um, most colleges have even, you know, a, an introductory writing course your freshman year that you'll have to take. And that's because the ability to communicate ideas with words is important no matter what field you go into. So the, the main essay also serves a purpose for um, applications in that it shows if, if, can you write? Can you have clarity of ideas? Can you convey your thoughts? And so it serves a lot of purposes for um, a college when they're reviewing an application, so. The supplemental essay on the other hand is, is a little bit different. So on the Common App, uh, like Deb said, there will be seven prompts and you have to answer one prompt and write about yourself. The supplemental essays are a way for colleges to understand whether you have done your research, um, do you truly see yourself at this college campus or are you just applying because you can pay the additional fee and just submit another application through the Common App. So the supplemental essay questions are college generated questions and they tend to be very college specific. So it's another chance for a college to get to know you and get to know your interests in a different way. It is also a way for colleges to compare maybe two applicants, apples to apples, if you will, because the supplemental essays are not so much about you as an individual, as it is about your interest, your choice of major, why you choose to apply to a particular college and others along those lines. So if your supplemental essays are to be effective, um, you definitely need to communicate through your writing that you have done your research. 
um, and it'll show through. So for example, if a college asks you, why are you applying to us? Why us as opposed to any other college in the US? And so if you're going to answer that question, you have to convey through the, the, the little, the few words that you have, that you have done your research, you clearly see certain things on campus that are of interest to you, whether it is a club or an organization, whether it's a professor whose research you're really interested in and you would love to participate in, or certain classes that you would love to take. You have to be able to communicate through supplemental essays that you have done your research and that you see yourself on campus. So one thing about the supplemental essays is sometimes colleges will have multiple supplemental prompts. Um, they all tend to be very short essays, sometimes 50 words, sometimes 150 words. The max I've generally seen is about 250 to 300 words. So they are very concise. So you have to be able to package your thoughts and convey with the little word count that you have that um, this is truly the place for you and you have to pitch yourself in that regard. So the supplemental essays are very, very different from the main common app essay. So let's talk for a second about some of the available applications. We're really basing a lot of this um, presentation off of the Common App. So there are 980 schools, uh, 979 right now, and there will be an additional 50 schools that are coming onto the Common App next year. Um, so it is one of the application, one of the ways that you can apply to colleges. And we're really basing sort of the, the Common App, the, the main essay prompts and sort of how we're gonna show you where to find a lot of things through the Common App. Another application um, that you can use is the Coalition for College. Um, it is a different kind of application. It looks very different. It feels very different. Um, there are fewer institutions now that are purely only coalition schools. So it used to be that some schools were only common app schools and some schools were only coalition schools. There are fewer and fewer schools that I think now are coalition schools. Um, SCORE, uh, some of you might be attend SCORE high schools that use SCORE, which S-C-O-I-R, SCORE. Um, SCORE and Coalition are creating a partnership that will be really, that's sort of unfolding right now, that will be really interesting to see how that sort of plays into how high schools help students apply to college through the coalition using SCORE. Um, the main essay though for, for Coalition Typically, your main essay for the Common App, you can also use as your main essay for a coalition application. So it's really handy that they um, many, many times your, your, your essay that you've written is going to be able to cross over into a different application. There are also, and we'll take a look at this in a minute, other institutions that have their own separate application that are not on Common App or coalition. So the University of California system is one of the ones that has its very own, very special, uh, separate kind of application. We'll take a look at a little bit of that in a, in a minute. Um, there are also institutions, um, MIT comes to mind, Georgetown comes to mind, um, whereby you can only apply through their application, which is on their website. And so, you know, sort of starting to understand now, if you're a junior, where are my applications? Um, where am I going to find these? And starting to explore those pieces, I think, is a really important piece of the process as well, so that you're not coming into September going, oh, wait, how do I apply to this college? Really starting to understand how do I even get to some of these applications and how am I, how do I organize myself, I think is really important. And um, before I dive into where to find what on the Common App, I just want to add something to what Deb said. So if a college, for example, uses the Common App, the Coalition, and has their own application, um, it doesn't package you better one way or the other. Um, each of the applications are just equal. The colleges don't favor one over the other. Really, in determining which application you're going to use to apply to a particular college, it should be a matter of convenience. So for example, if you're applying to 10 schools and nine of those schools are on the Common App, you should just complete the common app for the nine and then you do the other application for the other one school. So it really should be a matter of convenience. As for the common app, um, this is a screenshot of what I, I guess the, the portal looks like. So it's important to understand that the common app is a portal. So you set up an account, you log into the portal and then you will see the various tabs that are displayed on the screen right now. Um, one thing to recognize is that the common app for um, the current juniors goes live on August 1. 
but students can go ahead and uh, set up an account right now. They can even complete the application over the summer because what Common App will do is when August 1 comes around, if they see information entered in the portal, they will just roll everything over into the live application. So it's a really great way to work ahead. So once you log into the portal, the first tab is the dashboard, and that's kind of like Mission Central. So that's where all of the colleges that you have listed you're going to apply to are going to show up. And if you click on the down arrow, then it'll give you details. It's like a little snapshot of, okay, you have completed the Common App essay or you've not. Um, how many sections have you completed? So it really is a snapshot of everything that's going on in the portal. The My Colleges tab, the second tab, is where you would actually add the, the colleges that you are choosing to apply to. There is a limit on the Common App, and I believe it's 20. So you cannot apply to more than 20 schools um, at a time. I will say nobody should be applying to more than 20 schools. It really does create a lot of work, especially with supplemental essays, and it should not be taken lightly. Um, so the My Colleges section is where you will see the different schools listed. And if you click on each of the schools, all of the different pieces that feed into the application, including the supplemental essays, all of that information can be found there. The Common App tab is the tab where you will find the bulk of the application, right? And there are various pieces that go into it. So there is the profile, for example, which will list your name, your, your parents, any siblings, if you have any demographic information, and that also continues into the family section. The education section is where you will list what high school you're attending. And also under the family section, they're going to ask you where your parents attended high school, if they went to undergrad um, school, if they went to graduate school, you're going to have to list all of that. The testing section lists all of the tests that you've taken, the SAT, the ACT, whatever you're choosing to report. The activities section is the section that we talked about where you get 10 slots and you list um, the 10 activities that are the most meaningful to you and you describe them and tell the college what you got out of that engagement. And then of course, there is the writing section. The last two tabs, which is the college search and the financial aid resources. The college search tab is a really good way for you to just type in a college name and what the Common App will do is it'll bring up a list of just you know how much the application costs, like what all do you need to submit in order for your application to be complete, and just some general information. And the last tab, of course, offers some great resources on understanding financial aid, the FAFSA, and things like that. I think it's really important prior to fall of senior year for students, especially in the summer between junior and senior year, to set up their common app accounts, and more importantly, get comfortable with the portal understanding where you can find different information, where you can find different parts of the application, because the last thing you want to do when you're you know, approaching a deadline is to be scrambling and trying to navigate the portal and trying to figure out whether you have completed all of the requisite pieces or not. Um, the other thing I would say is that one of the time, uh, sometimes when my underclassmen, so ninth, 10th, 11th graders set up a common app, they get very anxious that they're going to do something wrong or they'll break it somehow. Um, and I think if you were ever to go talk to a senior, uh, the seniors would say, uh, you know, you cannot possibly accidentally apply to college. It takes so many steps. There are so many things that you have to fill out. There's all these little red asterisks next to things in the common app that if you haven't filled it out, you can't submit an application. So I would, you know, I completely echo what you're saying and I, I rummage around in the common app. I think it's really helpful for students to click things, open tabs. Um, at, so the more familiar you are with the common app, the easier the fall of your senior year will be for sure. So let's take a look at the activity section then. So um, this is just a screenshot. And if we have time at the end, we'll go actually into my common app application. Um, I have a fake one, which is super fun. Um, and uh, just sort of show you where to find things and how to navigate this piece. But these are sort of the, in order, what the activity section will look like for you. So um, do you have activities that you would wish to report? Yes, you do. Uh, we hope that you'll have at least a few. There's a drop down menu at the top of the activities list um, on that, the, that middle um, uh, screenshot that you have there. It's really helpful, I think, for students to click on that uh, tab and, and to just see the number of different things that go into 
what counts as an activity. I think it's really important. Sometimes students really devalue some of the things that they do. So family responsibilities is something that was added a couple of years ago as a new category for activities. I think that's a really important piece. A lot of times students are helping, particularly during the COVID years, you are helping to care for younger siblings or you're helping to care for you know, grandparents or aunts and uncles. And so really anything and everything that you do that doesn't happen inside a classroom counts as an activity. I think it's really important for students to understand that. And then there are really sort of three main characteristics, I think, that are important for the activities list. So the first is the organization name. So if there is a name to the thing that you do, if there's an organization that it belongs to, you want to include that name. Sometimes they don't have an organization. So if you're babysitting all the time, there is no babysitting name. Like there is no name that you've come up with for your babysitting company. And so um, this is a really important piece of, uh, you know, what is it called? One of the things that's important, I would just, uh, Sue and I actually just at a conference together and uh, we were listening to admissions officers talk about if there's an acronym, if it's an abbreviated something that everyone calls your, 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 the name of your club, spell it out for, for, colleges, they don't necessarily know what the thing is that you belong to. If, if you put DECA and they've never heard of DECA, it's not going to help them. So giving as much context and information as you possibly can is really helpful. Um, the second piece then I think that's really important is the position leadership description. So again, this is the place where you get to talk about things that you've done. So if you've had a leadership position, if you've won a really important award, if you have um, done it for many years, if you, if your team has won something, if you were the lead in the play, um, if you were, you know, your color guard won something, this is a place to highlight. That's the way I really think of the position leadership description as the highlights. And then this is the fun part is that you have 150 characters to talk about what you do in an activity. That is not a lot of characters. And so it's really important there to, um, to maximize space as much as possible. And so really use active verbs. You don't need to use complete sentences. You don't need to have um, fancy words. You don't need, this is not a place to show off your vocabulary necessarily. It's really give the admissions office context for the different kinds of responsibilities that you have and the things that you've accomplished and how you've been engaged with your community or your school through this activity. Um, and then a couple of the things it's going to ask when you did the activity, uh, if, if it was during school or not during school, and then I think sometimes, Sumana, you might see this as well. Students freak out about the hours spent per week and the week spent per year. Um, they, I had a student a couple of years ago who, who was a runner and he sent me a spreadsheet of, um, he was a cross country runner and then he did indoor and outdoor track. And he sent me a spreadsheet of all the times he ran. And I said, I don't want the spreadsheet. Thank you very much. But he did it anyway. And then he got sad because all he ever did was run. And I was like, well, yes, that's, we knew that. It does not have to be, I spent 14.2 minutes on this day and 18.9 hours on this other week. And it's really to help, again, provide context for the admissions office. How long do you generally spend on things? Um, is it something that you've done once? Is it something that you've done every week of your entire high school career? All of this information, again, provides them that really important piece of your narrative that is the context of how you've engaged with the world while you've been in high school. So all of these different pieces work together to provide a snapshot of how you live your life and sort of what matters to you and how you spend your time when you're not in class um, for college admissions officers. Um, anything I'm missing there? Do you think, Simona, anything that is? No, I think that was comprehensive. Thank you. And then you do wanna talk about the main essay topics. Yeah. Um, so like we mentioned earlier, so on the Common App, there are seven essay prompts. You have to pick one and you write one essay, which is 650 words. When they say 650 words, it isn't a suggestion. You really do need to limit it to 650 words. You can drop below 650. You cannot go one word above 650. That would not be a good idea. Um, and it also tells you that you, you know, your response cannot be shorter than 250 words. So structurally, that's really what it looks like. 
Now I'm going to, um, you know, I, I don't want to necessarily read through each essay prompt, but here's what I will say. If you look at the essay prompts that are provided, right? Each prompt is kind of showcases a different side of you or speaks to a different side of you. So as students are looking through the various essay prompts, for example, the first one talks about a background, identity, interest, or talent that is so meaningful that the student believes their application would be incomplete without it, right? The second one talks about obstacles the student has encountered and that are fundamental to later success. So did you face something like that? If yes, how did it affect you? How did you learn from the experience? Um, so when students are thinking about which essay prompt they're going to write about, they really have to ask themselves, okay, if I'm choosing to write about this, why am I choosing to write about this? The one thing that a student should consider when they're trying to determine what part of themselves they're going to pitch in a Common App essay is they've got to recognize that every part of their application tells a different story about them. So the transcript, for example, speaks to their academic abilities. The activities section talks about, you know, who they are, like what their interests are, how they choose to spend their time outside of the classroom. The Common App essay is really the only piece where the student can really talk about them, who they are, what their backstory is, why they make the choices they make, what makes them wake up in the morning and do the things that they do, all of the things that really have no other place in the application. So this is truly the only piece where the student can, I guess, really showcase their voice and who they are. So if you are going to pick one prompt over the other, it really becomes important for you to stop and think about why am I picking this prompt? What part of myself am I pitching? And am I truly offering something new? Is it new information or am, am I just talking about more of the same? So, and I'll give you an example of that. If you have a student who is a sports person, so let's just say they, they play two sports a year. The activity section really highlights that, showcases that, um, you know, it, that is a big part of them. If now in their Common App essay, they choose to write about them and how they, I don't know, um, you know, increase their, their uh, speed by so much in cross country and truly focusing on that sport again, the question they have to ask themselves is, am I providing any new information to the admissions officer? Also, it is true that when admissions officers read your essays, um, it, it, it doesn't take more than 30 seconds for them, for you to either hold their interest with what you're writing or for you to lose them with what you're writing. So it really becomes important to make sure that you are picking the right prompt. And one thing I tell students, when you're picking a prompt or choosing what to write about, think of what brings up really strong emotions in you whether those are happy emotions or not necessarily happy emotions, but they raise strong emotions in you. Because if, they, if the, that, I guess that prompt does, then you know you're going to do a good job with your writing because it is going to be powerful, it is going to be meaningful. So I just want to point out a few things about some of the, prom the, the seven prompts that are listed here. If you look at each prompt that's listed, it has sub questions embedded within it. And the student needs to be really careful to make sure that they are answering all parts of the prompt, right? So for example, number one is one of the most popular prompts because it talks about, about a background, identity, interest, or talent. But the question they're asking is, if you believe it's important for you to share this part of you, tell us about it and share your story, right? So you've got to make sure that you're answering that question. In the second prompt, when they're talking about obstacles, it says, recount a time when you faced a challenge, setback or failure, how did it affect you and what did you learn from that experience? One, one thing that students should not get, I guess, um, just stuck with is they shouldn't get stuck with process. And what I mean by that is when students write and say, I did this first, then I did that, then I did that, that's really process. One thing that you want to focus on with your essay is more about reflection and you processing what took place rather than talking about that incident in detail. So if you're talking about the obstacle 
and you're writing about an obstacle that you encountered, your entire essay shouldn't be about the obstacle itself. That should take up maybe a few sentences where you're just saying briefly what happened, but the rest of the essay should really be reflection, you processing what happened and you explaining to someone what you learned from it and how you walked away stronger, right? Um, some of the others, um, I'm not gonna read through all of them. I do want to point out a couple of things on the last essays, uh, the last prompt. So the last prompt says, share an essay on any topic of your choice. It can be one you've already written, one that responds to a different prompt or one of your own design. Um, so if you look at the prompt, you know, I've had students ask me, I wrote this really fabulous paper um, in my social studies class. Can I present that? Now, while the writing might be spectacular on that essay that you wrote for a social studies class, the question to ask is, is it doing you justice in pitching you and your backstory to an admissions officer? If you're writing about a historical event, how is that relevant to you? And how does it showcase you? And is it doing a good job in advocating for who you are as a human being? And so, yes, while you can you know, write about anything, you have to be careful to not recycle um, a piece that was written for an academic class, because if it doesn't showcase you and doesn't do you justice, then you're not helping yourself. And this, the main essay, is truly a crucial point uh, of the application. And it is very important for you to make sure that you're pitching yourself well and providing the backstory. Absolutely. Um, I also love to talk to students about the fact that, that the questions, if you sort of start at number three, say reflect, reflect, discuss, describe, share. It's really about that those verbs I think are really important to pay attention to. This is what they want is that reflection and sharing and discussion. Um, so how do I start with the main essay? This is sort of some of the pieces because sometimes it can seem overwhelming and it seems like a really big blank sheet of paper that you're um, trying to start with. So um, start with literally just writing down everything that you want admissions to know about you. It can be minute, it can be big, it can be your values. There are great, we're gonna take a look at College Essay Guy shortly, but there's a wonderful, one of our wonderful colleagues, his name is Ethan Sawyer. He has some fantastic brainstorming exercises um, that are really sort of helping you think about what are all the pieces of me? Again, we don't often have time for that self-reflection. The main essay really demands that you take the time for self-reflection and that you take the time to really start to think about who you are and what you want admissions officers to know about you. Um, so the questions to sort of really take a look at, you know, who are you? What are you most proud of? Sometimes students get hung up on this idea that they need to have, I don't know, rescued a cow from a well or like lifted a us <laughs> off an old lady or something in order for their for their essay to be meaningful but that is not at all the case I think sometimes the smallest moments can be really great if the thing that you're most proud of is that you made it through um you know December without uh doing badly on a test in pre-calc Awesome. That's great. You know, it's really about what is most meaningful to you. So the what you're most proud of does not have to be that you won the football game or that you were the star of the theater show. It can really be anything that's meaningful for, for you. What values matter most to you? This is a really important question for colleges to consider too, because again, you're gonna be someone who's a part of their community for four years. What values, what experiences, what perspectives are you going to bring to their campus? Um, what moments have mattered to you? Because that can really help define sort of who you are as a person. Again, has it been something with your family? Has it been something at school? Has it been something where you've been able to, to reflect in your life? I've been having conversations with a lot of juniors about these moments. And for a lot of them, I think this, this past year, it's really been times when they've been able to sort of think and decompress. I think there's so much motion in our lives that, that the moments that have mattered to them the most have been moments where they've been at peace. Um, who do you love to be with? Again, who are you gonna wanna be with when you're on campus? You know, What is the kind of roommate you're gonna be? What is the kind of student you're gonna be? What relationships have you formed that have been really important to you? 
Um, the obstacle question, uh, many colleges will also ask the obstacle question as a, as a supplemental essay. So it is a question that is very likely going to come up some point in your application. And again, the greatest obstacle does not have to be that your leg fell off during a lacrosse game. It, it does not have to be something tragic and overwhelming. Your greatest obstacle can be that you couldn't figure out how to not procrastinate. Um, your biggest obstacle could be that you could not play the piano, even though you practiced for years and years and years. It's really, truly, what have has have you overcome? And most importantly, what have you learned from overcoming it? That's the key ingredient. What makes you worried? What makes you excited? Write all of it down. And I think it's also really important to understand that the writing process is a process. Your first draft is not going to be your final draft. For the vast majority of people, probably 99.8% of people, this you want this process to take time. You want to think about it over time. You want to work on it and come back to it and have new ideas and perspectives on it. So the very first drafts are what I call for my students a brain dump. It is literally just taking all the thoughts that you have in your head and putting them on paper. Um, I liken it a lot of times to if you've ever seen someone make a clay pot on a wheel, the first thing that they do is take a big messy lump of clay and throw it down and it's messy and there's weird pieces sticking out of it. But that is truly what your first draft of your essay is going to be. It's going to be that messy lump of clay. And over time, you are going to shape it into a, a piece that is truly reflective of you and, and is a beautiful thing to behold. I, I love that image, Deb. That's going to stick with me. <laughs> the lump of clay on the wheel. I, 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 ha I used to have a video that I made students watch and then they were like, this is weird. <laughs> It's literally a guy going. <laughs> so once you have all of that together, um, what do you do next? How do you approach your main essay? Um, so it's important to recognize that the common app essay, the main essay is a narrative. So it is a story about you. Um, it, is, it is a backstory. It is a story. It should have a lot of um, reflection in it. Um, you should be recording emotions. You should be helping people understand how you process the world around you, things like that. So the different pieces of the essay is that your opening paragraph should always have a hook in it. it there should be something that draws the reader in, captures their interest, but doesn't necessarily give everything away. So one thing I tell students is when you're thinking about your opening paragraph of your essay, Think about the opening scene in a movie, maybe an action movie or anything. What is the camera zeroing in on? What is it focusing on? What is it showing you? So if you, let's just say you, if any of you have watched James Bond movies, right? Think about the opening scene. There's always something crazy happening. It's high energy, but they're not necessarily giving away the entire story in the opening scene. And that's what your opening paragraph should be like. It should be a little bit of a teaser that piques the reader's interest and wants them to continue reading. And that's what your hook or your opening should be like. The main body of your essay um, should really have a lot of reflection in it. If you're um, talking about an incident or something that happened to you, like I said, it really shouldn't take up the entire essay, maybe a few sentences, but the rest of the essay should really be reflection because what the reader is trying to understand through the story that you're telling about yourself is how did you process information? How did you deal with what was being thrown at you? And how did you emerge at the other end, right? Um, and then of course, when you're concluding your essay, you do want to kind of wrap everything up and not leave it open to interpretation because if you're leaving it open to interpretation, you're running the risk of the reader interpreting something that you might not have int intended. So always make sure that you're wrapping it up, you're hammering home the point that you've been trying to make in this essay all along, and that you're, there's no doubt in the reader's mind as to what they're taking away. Sorry, I went too far ahead. So there are some really great places that you can see excellent examples of essays that have worked. So these are just three different websites. Again, we I referenced the, on the far right, this is the College Essay Guy. So again, Ethan Sawyer, College Essay Guy, 
phenomenal resource. His website is is a go-to for pretty much all aspects of the college application process. It's free um, to get a lot of this information. He's really wonderful in sharing a lot of his pieces. But then colleges themselves also often have great examples. So I'm a really big fan of both Hopkins and Connecticut colleges. Both have websites that have essays that worked. Um, and it really goes through the particular one about Hopkins. Hopkins goes, it shows you an essay and then it actually gives the admissions officers their response to that essay and why they felt that an essay worked. The thing that I also really love about these examples is that students, you can see the wide array of topics on which students write. There, it is, truly an exploration of the universe in a lot of ways. And so it shows you again that there is no one right topic. There is no one special thing. There is no, what do colleges want me to write about? What colleges want you to write about is you. And so that's the beauty of the main essay, I think, and, and, and why it can be helpful to sometimes take a look at sort of other um, students' voices is to really see that it, it's truly about you. It's truly about your experience. And there is no magic number. There is no magic topic. It's truly the more authentic your voice has been, the more authentic you've shared your experience, the, the stronger that essay is going to be. So let's talk about the supplemental essay prompts and where you find them. So um, if you go to the My Colleges tab on the Common App, and if you click the, the drop down arrow next to the college that you're looking at, um, you will see that there's an application section which has questions which are college specific. But there is also a writing supplement section. And if a college has supplemental questions, Please know that not all colleges do not ask students to, to write answers to supplemental questions. Some just plain don't have them. But if a college has supplemental questions that you are required to answer, if you scroll down and you click on the right, look at the writing supplement section and you click on the questions there, that's where you are going to find your supplemental questions. Please know that um, one of the advantages of the Common App is that you can complete the application just once, you can write one main essay, and you're pretty much done with that application and you can submit it to multiple colleges. But what is really going to get you in terms of volume and writing is going to be the supplemental essays. Because each college, um, if you happen to have a list of say seven or eight schools on your list and they all require supplemental essays of you, each college could have maybe two supplemental prompts, three, some of the IVs have between five and six supplemental prompts. So the supplemental essays are really what are gonna get you. So um, I always recommend to students that in the summer between junior and senior year, or even earlier to that, if they're setting up their common app, it's always a good idea to go ahead and add the colleges that you know you want to apply to, to the dashboard and take a look at the, the supplemental prompts copy and paste them in a Word document, in one Word document, so you can look at the volume of writing you have to accomplish and pace yourself through the summer to get those done. Um, so also as you're using, um, doing your research on the college websites, just know that all of that is content that will feed into your supplemental essays. So it's always important for the student to take copious notes as they're researching colleges. I would also say sometimes um, for us in the UNC system, um, sometimes it is not very clear under which tab the supplemental essays are going to appear. So I think, again, it's really important to add those colleges to your list and really start clicking around. If you see a text box that looks like the one that's on the right-hand side, that is a supplemental essay box. Um, and so really sort of starting to look and see some of the UNC system schools, they put it under more about you or additional information. Um, sometimes they put it in places that the, it, it says that it's a writing section, but the writing section doesn't actually have any writing in it. So sometimes that can be a little bit confusing. So again, you know, the earlier you can start to do this investigation, the, the easier your life will be later. We only want happy surprises in this application process. No surprises of, oh no, I didn't know I had to do that. <laughs> Uh, so let's just talk about two of the most common supplemental essay questions. So the first is the why us? Why do you want to go here to this college? The second question that is often very, very um, uh, consistent is why did you choose this major? 
And again, this is where colleges really want to see um, how much have you done your homework on our institution? How much have you done your homework on this major or have you picked it out of a hat? Um, I think one of the things that's important to know is that in the, particularly the why us question, you have to remember that the admissions office, people who work in the admissions office have, have told multiple people on a daily basis, information about their rank, about their location, about the size of their student body, about their student faculty ratio. You do not need to use the space of the why us application question to tell them information that they know. A lot of times I think students really feel like, well, it's a safe bet. I can tell them what their student faculty ratio is and that I like that. They know what their student faculty ratio is. They probably put it on their website. This is really about what do you envision yourself doing at that institution? If you've been able to be on campus or if you've done a virtual tour, or you've, done, you've participated in a virtual session, what really spoke to you? What mattered to you? What drew you to that institution? Um, in North Carolina, again, we've got two um, amazing institutions on the, our, either of our coasts, App State and UNCW. And many times students will take a look at UNCW and say, I really love the beach. Yes, we are very happy for you that you love the beach, but why do you want to go to UNCW as an institution? So it's really thinking about beyond just the, the data and the rankings. Um, it's really what, what do you see yourself doing at that institution? And if the question is, why did you choose that major? What has led you to that interest? Have you taken coursework already that has shown you that you're really interested in this? Have you done some research? Have you had a summer job in this? What are the reasons for you to be interested in those pieces? So how to approach these questions? Um, and I'll start by saying this. If multiple colleges have the same supplemental essay prompt, you know you've done a good job if you pick your answer to the prompt for one college and you insert it into the box for another college and it doesn't fit. If you're speaking in generalities and like, for example, if you're, let's just say you're looking to pursue an engineering major. If you're speaking in generalities and you're not really giving the college anything of substance as it relates to them, you're not really doing yourself justice, right? So if you can pick up your supplemental essay prompt and have it answer supplemental questions for other colleges, it is not specific enough. So when I say be specific, you need to cite the names of professors if their work is something that interests you. You need to take the names of classes if that's something that drew you. And if you're telling yourself, oh my gosh, I would love to take this class. Um, if there is something on campus that you totally see yourself engaging in, say it, but don't just say, I love to dance. If you want to be part of a specific dance team, take that dance team's name and say, I would love to be a part of X. I see myself doing this. I have danced for so many years. This would be a way for me to integrate into the community. So you really need to do your homework and you need to be as specific as possible when you're listing everything on campus that you see yourself engaging in and consequently being a part of that community. Mm -hmm. I, I hope that some of my juniors are listening to this because they will be hearing it from someone that is not me telling them the exact same thing. It would be really great. Um, we did want to just take a look for a second at some other sorts of uh, application questions, just so that you can see a little bit of a difference. So again, we referenced earlier that the University of California has its own um, application system. So you would apply, you can apply to all of the UC institutions on their one application. They do not have the main essay. They do not have the one 650 word essay that is, that is sort of the one big piece. They have what are called their personal insight questions, the PIQs. And these are the, the eight that you could potentially re, uh, respond to for the UC system, you respond to four of those questions. But if you take a look at these questions, in many ways, they are very similar to the questions that you would be considering for the common application as well. So again, it's because these institutions really want to know who you are. And so these questions are, are really getting, again, to the, to the core of your experience and your values and um, your 
engagement with your community. So again, the 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 PI the personal insight questions, the PIQs are slightly different, but they respond to this. You're going to be responding to the same ideals in there. Um, the other one I wanted to take a look at quickly is Virginia Tech is a school that does not look at your common app main essay. So there are some institutions that are not going to look at your main essay. Virginia Tech has its own special for supplemental essays. It's the Utprosum profile. And so there are, you know, differences. None of colleges tend not to be the same because why would they make it easy and be all exactly the same? But that's because they want you to respond to them as a college, as a university. They want you to really think about who they are and what matters to them. And so the more that you can start to do that homework again now and really look at what the colleges are looking for, I think the easier your life will be. But just to note that there are, you know, differences across the spectrum in terms of what colleges are, um, what they ask. So I um, just want to finish out with offering up some great resources. Um, Deb had pointed these out earlier. So please do browse the University of Washington's website. Um, we talked about um, Johns Hopkins as well. All of these colleges on their websites have really great examples of essays that you can look at. And um, like Deb was saying on Hopkins's website, they will also break it down and tell you why this essay is great. The College Essay Guys website is fabulous. Um, it takes two seconds to just enter your email address and say, you, yes, you would like the free guide. And it literally breaks down the main um, personal statement essay, the main common app essay piece by piece. And it tells you what you need to think about, what you need to write, and it's delivered to you. And of course, once you sign up, you get um, emails as well, you know, just asking you to stop and think about certain things and how you need to package the information. So these are all great resources. Please definitely do tap into them and you'll find them very useful. And I think that's it. Um, let me just stop sharing for a second. And then were there um, any questions in the chat? I didn't see. Um, there was one, I answered that. And if I didn't answer your question, please feel to try type something in again and we're happy <laughs> to do it. That's great. Um, well, we're at, we've, we've run out of time, I think just about, um, it's so lovely that, uh, to see you again, Sumana. Um, and, uh, we hope that this was a, a really helpful session for you. Um, just a reminder as well that, um, the SACAC website, the mini camp colleges, now that's under college workshops, there are many, many, many college workshops that have been provided and they are all recorded from everything from choosing a college um, to uh, financial aid to writing your essay. There's very specific ones on each pieces of the, each of the pieces of the application. Um, they are really the, the, I think that the college workshops are an extraordinary resource. And so make sure that you go and visit that page as well um, to see sort of, you know, what other topics there might've been that it could be of, of interest to you. Oh, um, a question, do children of faculty members at universities have an ad any advantage? That I would say is institution specific. <laughs> like, <laughs> it depends on the college. <laughs> that, that is very true. Um, there is no, and, and actually I will say also when it comes to college admissions, there is no one size fits all. So you're going to hear it depends a lot. Um, <laughs> Deb is definitely right on that one. That's the fun part of this. And also sometimes the part that makes us want to tear our hair out, which is, it depends. So um, thank you so much all for being here and um, uh, please come back for future sessions in the fall. Bye everyone, Bye. thanks for attending. Um, I think we are good, Deb. I don't see any other questions either in the Q&A or in the chat. Great. Yay. Thank you. Have a wonderful week. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Bye. Y'all, thank you so much. Oh, I'm so, I'm so sorry that there was panic at the beginning. Sorry, right, hold on. Where am I? There you are. Hey, Juan. Uh, thank you. I, great. Reason, like, I couldn't log on. And I don't know if it's because our Zoom um, account, like because it's tied to Westminster. I don't know if it will let me won't lend me add another one. Uh, oh, okay. On as um, like through the website, and so it let me log on through the website.
but it wouldn't let me just log on through the app that's on my computer. And so that that's no, that you happened. did great. We got in just in time. That's all that mattered. <laughs> um, well, thank you again. This is great. Um, thank thank you all for for the information and for doing this and. Have a good rest of your night. Someone else, see you tomorrow. I would, I will do any mm -hmm. seminar anytime with someone out because I, I wow. listen to you and I just feel like I'm doing this like the entire time. <laughs> like yes, yes, <laughs> definitely on the same page. <laughs> it's good. Well, thank you so much. Have a really wonderful week. Thank you too. Bye. Bye. Bye.